Hi everyone, today I wanted to uh, give a quick demonstration about the differences between Red Hat 9, which has just been released, and Red Hat 8. And please stick with me to the end as we talk about the reason why at the moment I'm not recommending Red Hat 9. In this video, we've got Red Hat 9 on the left hand side and Red Hat 8 on the right. I'm just going through the, uh, the initial installation at the moment. Um, I've put the ISO into these virtual machines. I'm just booting it up to the installation wizard. And there's a couple of subtle and not so subtle differences in the installation wizard that I just wanted to show you. So firstly, Red Hat 9 knows I'm in the UK. Red Hat 8 still thinks I'm in America. So in Red Hat 8, I need to select United Kingdom. In Red Hat 9, I don't. Um, so let's go to, to connect up to um, uh, the Red Hat network and you'll notice in Red Hat 9 we can and Red Hat 8 we can't. And the reason being is that Red Hat 8 we need to go and enable the network. In Red Hat 9 the network that on boot is set to yes by default which is a massive win because let's be honest a, a system without a network enabled is pretty pointless. So let's go let's enable that set the host name. And now you'll notice we can go through and do the uh, Red Hat network setup. So we're just going to go and put in username, password, and connect to um, you know their version of satellite. So so we'll go through that. I've, I've sped up some of these win wizards. Um, we're all connected up now. Select my disks. I disable KDump. I just don't use it. Um, it's up to you whether you do or not, obviously. And again, we'll see this time zone. This time zone is set to Europe, London. A Red Hat 9, it knows where I am, and in the U in the Red Hat 8 box, it's, well, I first set it to Dublin, but I need to go and set that to London. We'll click the minimal install, um, and then we'll go ahead and have a quick look at the network. So the network for Red Hat 9, I just need to put in my host name. As we can see, top right, the network's already on. This is all DHCP. Um, and then we'll go through to the security profile. So the security profile, there's a lot in here. We'll notice there's a lot of draft in Red Hat 9. Um, and I'm going to touch a little bit about that at the end. Um, so stick with me for that. So the root password in Red Hat 9, you can just ignore this. It will just set the root password um, and disable the root account for you, which is a new feature of Red Hat 9. By default, the, red, the, the root account is not enabled. Obviously, in this wizard, you can go and set that. So we've done that. We'll go and put in our, our local user. Um, in this instance, it's just me, so I'm just putting in Toby. And then we'll go ahead and begin the installation. Um, and again, I've massively sped this up for the purpose of this video. Um, it goes through, obviously, grabs all the RPMs that it needs um, and sets everything up for you. And there we go. It's now complete. So let's go ahead and reboot that system. And it will come up and uh, give us a prompt in a moment. There's Red Hat 9 booting up just that little bit faster than Red Hat 8. Um, but there we go. So they are both ready now. Um, so I'm going to switch across to an SSH window. Um, I'm going to become root and we're going to just have a look at a couple of things. Now, when I made this uh, video, um, I was going to start talking about SE Linux and things like that, but I'd save for a future video. Um, so I've gone and installed Vim uh, on these servers. Obviously, we don't need Vim right now, um, but uh, this video has got that in. Um, so let's have a quick look at OpenSSL and compare them next to each other. So on the left-hand side, OpenSSL is now at version 3. Okay, a new thing for Red Hat uh, 9. In Red Hat 8, we're still at 1.1 uh, one, one, uh, out of the box for Red Hat 7, uh, for Red Hat 8, sorry. Um, so OpenSSL, we've gone to three. Node.js, um, we've upgraded. We're now uh, at version 16 um, from version 10. Um, have a quick look at Perl. Any Perl lovers still in the house? So we've got Perl um, sitting at, a, uh, we're still at version five, but we've gone from 5.26 to 5.32. Uh, PHP, I'm a big lover of PHP. So we've gone from PHP 7.2 straight to PHP 8. Um, and for those of you that have tried to install PHP 8 on a um, version 8, it's doable. Um, but 
you know, there's a couple of extra repositories we need to do. So, um, PHP is now at eight. Python, massive change. So, in version eight, you had read, uh, you had Python two seven. Um, to get three, you had to go and enable repos, install Python three, etc., etc. In Red Hat nine, there is no Python two anymore. It's all Python three, and it's all Python three nine, which is great. Um, but there is no Python 2. I haven't tried to go and find how I can get Python 2 on it. Um, you probably could. Um, but Python 3 is everywhere. Ruby. Ruby's upgraded from 2.5 to 3. Um, and MySQL. So MySQL's at uh, 8 now. Um, 8.0. Um, but it's only a minor, minor re release. So it's gone from uh, 8.0 to 6. Um, up to 8028 um, and that's the same for the MySQL client and MySQL server. Now there are a few new things in Cockpit I am led to believe that I'm going to be um, looking at over um, in detail in another video. So um, interestingly though enough looking at the release notes um, cockpit has got some improvements in it, yet we're still at 264.1 um, of cockpit, so it might be some third party cockpit add ons um, that have allowed us to do that. So let's have a look by, and this is the reason why I do not recommend at the moment to go ahead with Red Hat 9. So, again, Red Hat 8 on the left, Red Hat 9 on the right. So, one of the big things um, that I noticed with Red Hat 9 is all of the draft CIS stuff. So, and if you go into there, um, if you go into it on the CIS website or the Red Hat website, it talks that Red Hat hasn't finished doing its evaluation, etc., etc. So you can't actually apply these security profiles um, and feel that they are 100% ready um, at the moment. Now, I'm sure that that will come. Um, and as Red Hat 9 goes into full adoption, um, it will be better. There won't be the drafts. For Red Hat 8, obviously, there are no drafts. Um, and Red Hat 8 is used um, in a lot of places. So at the moment, that's why I wouldn't use it. Um, and that's it really. So I hope that's been an insight um, into how to install Red Hat 9, the new features of Red Hat 9. Um, and we've only really scratched the surface. There's lots of things about Podman, um, there's cockpit changes, there's live kernel patching now, um, which was in 8, but there are in the release notes, it does talk about and being able to do it from cockpit, which I've seen you can do in 8, so I, I need to investigate that a little bit more. Um, but Red Hat 9 is here, it's here to stay, um, and hopefully um, this video has been really useful. So thanks for your time. Um, any questions or anything you want me to go and look into a little bit further, please uh, comment this video, um, and thanks again for your time.